My name is Wanja. I'm Charlie. And I'm Marara. Ra. And I'm so excited about today's show. Why is that, Marara? Oh, I love sports. And today's show is all about sports. You're right, Marara. This week's show is all about sports. But there's other stuff as well. Because Teacher Pendo is going to be teaching us something cool in cool words. And Masiri is taking us out there. And of course, don't forget, where there's sports, there's number one. That's right. So, let's all get ready. And get set. <laughs> and go. go. Oh, oh, oh. into the chill out zone to meet our studio guests. Hello, everyone. Hello. Why don't we say a big hello to everyone who is watching us at home? Hello. It's really great to have you here helping us with today's show. We are going to have lots of fun, right? Right. Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> you see, Marara is really excited because this week's show is all about sports. Yes, I love sports, all kinds of sports. I like football, I like netball, I like basketball. Oh, Marara. I like... <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, not so fast. Why don't we first tell everyone what the buzzwords are? Yeah, Marara? Oh, OK, sorry. I was just a bit excited. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> what are today's no zone buzzwords? Team. Coach. Match. Champion. Referee. All of today's no zone buzzwords are going to appear throughout our program. But let's see how many we can spot in the next show. That's right, it's time for the Junction Juniors. He's even been awarded World Football of the Year. But according to the majority, Messi is the best. He's only 20 years old and he's representing Barcelona in a big way. Instead of arguing about international matches, why don't you argue about who's the best player in Kenya? That's the person who's thinking right there. Yeah. Pass one. Referee. Spell it. R E F. E R double E. Yeah! Where's the lady? We need to start our meeting. I think she'll be late. She's in the athletics team, and so she'll go for cross country. Oh boy, I hate those cross country runs. All those make me out of breath. Me too. I once got lost in the forest. It was really scary. What's your problem, you two? Haven't you told them that your mother is very sick? Yeah, with the deadly virus. Yeah. And if you keep playing with them, we'll give it to them too. Mm -hmm. Don't say we didn't warn you. Cut it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 
Ar. Wrong target. I don't have time for your stupid games. Let's open for her. But the rule is that if you don't get a word correct, then the door shouldn't be opened for you. But it's unlikely that you accept defeat that easily. I mean, she is right. Let's go get her. Maybe something bad happened to her during the cross country. I hope not. Gosh, I hate those cross country runs. No, not that bad. Cross country helps us stay fit and healthy. They are just like any other sport. Well, it's a big perimeter to cover. It feels like punishment. What's a perimeter? A distance all round. I don't get it. This is a perimeter. The distance all round. Ah. This is a square. To find the value of the perimeter, you measure the length of the four sides and add them up. Ah. Leletti, what's wrong? It's okay, Lilith. You can speak to us. We are your friends. It's those two boys, Amos and Freddy. What did they do this time? They told some girls not to play with me because my mom is HIV positive. They'll catch it from me. What? What if it's true? That's not how HIV spreads. How sure are you? We learned about it in school. OK. Why don't we go see Nurse Kate for more help? That's a good idea. I tell you, Mutsautian is the best player. Oliet is the best East African player. If Bob was here, he would have agreed with me. Oliet is just a ah, little bit. I don't know. Me, I don't know. Ah, Hey guys, I'm meeting Lelisi. Oh, the girl with the sick mother. Well, we always try to keep away from her, and we suggest you do the same. Mmm, so even you can't catch it. Too bad that you always sleep in class. <clears throat> Let me teach you about the human anatomy. Let me give you a free lesson about the HIV, how it spreads. Please pay attention. If you do not understand anything, just say repeat. Repeat. The virus doesn't spread through simply playing with friends or shaking their hands. HIV is spread by the transfer of bodily fluids. For example, if the blood of an injured person with HIV gets into your body through cuts or scratches on your hand, that's why doctors and nurses wear gloves. And Lenetti, you are doing a very good job of being supportive to your mom. You need to be strong for her. Her health has greatly improved since she started taking ARVs. Thanks for answering our questions, Nasuki. You also need to take good care of your bodies. Eat well and exercise. The patient I'm about to see is only nine years old and she's already suffering from a heart disease because she's overweight. Remember, exercise is very important, okay? Now off you go. So, you shouldn't refuse to play with other children just because your parents have HIV. Do you have any questions? Who crowned you the professor? You have no right to teach me anything about the human and anatomy. anatomy. Well, it seems there are no other relevant questions, so that's it for the day. So sorry to hear what Amos and Freddy put you through. Yeah, at least now we know how the virus spreads. Oops, it's getting late. I have to go home. Before we go, I think she'll come up with a way to tell others how HIV spreads. Yes, it is important for young people to know the right information. I agree. And after what Nasket told us, I think we should also tell others on the importance of exercising. I have an idea. <laughs> This is 
is a super idea, using football to tell young people more about HIV and also about keeping fit. Yep, and thanks for the posters, they really help. You go, just open it and pour. Here you go, just open it and pour. What's the glucose for? The glucose is for quick energy for the second half of the game. You need to drink lots of water when you're running around and playing sports, especially when it's hot. Also, try to eat a proper meal for lunch when playing football or any sporting activity in the afternoon. Time to play rough. We will not lose this game. Let's get them! but I cannot allow you to play today again. Oh no, she has to play or else we'll lose. We don't have anyone else to replace her in the game. What about you? Oh no, I can't. Why can't you? Well, because my friend told me that with my asthma, my heart can stop any time if I play football. That's not entirely true. Asthma should not be an excuse to miss out on sports. In fact, sports is good for anyone with asthma. All you need to do is to make sure you have your inhaler in case you feel extremely breathless. Do you have your inhaler? Yes, I do. Good, then you're good to play. No, I don't want Trust me. Good, I liked it. What about you, Marara? Oh, I liked it too, Wanja. That was two of my favorite things, football and Junction Juniors. <laughs> we know, Marara, we know. But what about our studio guests? Did you all enjoy that episode of Junction Juniors? Yes! So did you hear any of the buzzwords, Munyasia? I heard the word team. Very good. Nganga? I heard the word referee. Excellent. Martin? The whole episode has been about the charity football match. And match is a buzzword. Very Excellent. good. What else did you learn, Mora? Tell me. I learned that we should not refuse to play with the people who are affected by the HIV virus. Very good. Wanjiro? I learned that people who have HIV in their families need our support. Excellent. Well done, all of you. You have learned a lot. <laughs> We all know what that sound means. Yeah. It means that it's time for cool words. Hello everyone and welcome back to Cool Words. Are you all ready for today's lesson? Yes! Good. Today we are going to learn about verbs that double a consonant when they become past tense. Oh, teacher Pendo, each week it gets harder. That's not true, Marara. You're all doing very well. You'll see, you'll like, get on so well with today's lesson. Oh, I hope you're right. Now, can anyone remind us what a verb is? Oh, oh I can, I can. Yes, Marara? A doing or being word. Aha, uh -huh, that's right. Now, verbs are the only words that can be changed into the past tense. Now, all the words we will be looking at today will be verbs. Um, 
wait, uh, did you say something about co 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 cons consonants? Cons consonants, yeah. Consonants are letters that are not vowels. Now, does anyone know which letters are vowels? Yes, Munyasia. A, E, I, O, U. Very good. And what is a vowel? Vowels are speech sounds you make with your mouth open without your teeth or tongue interfering, like this. A, E, E, O, U. Now let's say that together. A, E, E, O, U. Very good. Now the rest of the letters in the alphabet are called consonants. Now let's say that together. Consonants. Now who will give me some examples of consonants? Oh, me. Yes, Marara. M for Marara. Mm hmm Someone else? Yes, Wanjiro. P. P. Yes, Mora. D. D. Yes, Stacy. G. G. Very good. Now, all those are examples of consonants. Verbs that end with a single consonant preceded by a short vowel double the consonant before adding the suffix ed or ing. Oh, my dear teacher Pendo. Now, what is a short vowel? That's a very good question. Now, a short vowel is a vowel that is not pulled. For example, I can say a or a. Okay, now the first vowel is a short vowel. Now, let me give you an example so that you can compare. Wag and wage. Now, the first one, wag, has a short vowel, while the second one, wage, has a long vowel. Wag? Wedge. They sound different. Yes, they do. That's very correct. Now, let me give you a sentence. I can say, the dog wags its tail. Now, when I change this sentence into the past tense, I can say, the dog wagged its tail. Now, I'll have to double the consonant G. Mm, I think I'm beginning to understand. Uh -huh. Now, did anyone notice a verb that Marara has used that has just doubled its consonant when adding ing? G? Yes. Begin. That's right. Begin has doubled its consonant when ing was added. Now, can anyone think of some other examples? Oh, me, me, me. Yes, Marara. Stop. Yes, another one. Yes, Wanjiro. Hop. Uh-huh. Yes, Mara. Feet. Feet. Yes, Stacy. Beg. Very good. Now, let's see what happens to these words when we change them into the past tense. Now, I'd like you to say the word again and then change it into the past tense. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Can I start? Yes. <laughs> Stop. Stopped. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yes, Wanjiro. Hop, hopped. Aha, uh -huh. well done. Yes, Mara. Feet, fitted. Aha, uh -huh. someone else? Yes, Stacy. Bag, bagged. Well done, all of you. Now, here on the table, I have some cards with some words written on them. Now, I want you to pick some words which you think will double their consonant when we add ed. Now, who will be first? Yes, Munyasia. So you've picked skip. So what does it become? Skipped. Very good. Who is next? Yes, Wanjiro. You've picked? Drop. So what does it become? Dropped. Mm -hmm. Well done. Anyone else? Yes, Mora. You've picked? Nod. What does it become? Nodded. Aha, uh -huh. well done. Someone else? You picked? Sip. And what does it become? Sipped. Good. Well done, everyone. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how many words double their consonants when you add ing or ed. Let's find out if there are more in out there. You remember last week I took my good friend Pal to open a Jumbo Junior bank account. This week it's time for us to have lots of fun thanks to Cooperative Bank. I hear there's lots of games. Come on people, let's go and have fun! These are so many people. What if one of the kids gets lost? Their parents will have a really hard time looking for them. Oh, okay. Before any kids get in, they are given special tags with their parents' phone number on it, just in case they get lost. And Pal gets one too, with my phone number on it. It's very caring of the bank to put such measures in place. How much money have you saved this year? Did you know you could actually save lots of money by saving coins? Today, kids not only have the chance to have fun, but also get to bank the money they have been saving in their accounts. Do you have a bank account? Don't keep your money under the mattress anymore. 
go open a Jumbo Junior Bank account. You might save enough money to pay your school fees. Who knows? Zero. Zero. As long as you're 18 years and below, all you need is 2,000 Kenya shillings, your birth certificate, and in the company of your parent or guardian, visit any cooperative bank branch and voila! You will have your own Jumbo Junior bank account. I've been giving Pal new coins to buy sweets. Let's see if you used it all or you got to save some. We're going to count it together. Eh? Good girl. I can see you're becoming responsible every day. I knew opening a Jumbo Junior account for Pal was the best ever. I hear I can get a special discount at specific bookshops for her school books and uniform as well. Let's go now and have fun! And remember, everything here is totally free. I wonder how much weight it can carry on its back. And now it's time to shake my legs and move my bones. But first, let's see what the children have for us. Fantastic. This is a real competition. <laughs> and because I don't want you to laugh at me, let's say I'm tired for now. Maybe I'll dance next time. Why did I forget my swimming costumes? It's so hot and I'm boiling. I'll do anything to get into the pool. I would have so much fun. And there are so many lifesavers on standby. This is great. This looks like any other wall, but remember, it's a sticky one. Are you afraid of heights like me? I hope not. It's getting late now. And for me and Pal, we have a long journey to go. So, bye! Wow, that was an interesting trip that Maspidi took today. Mm, yes, he's so lucky he always takes interesting trips. And he looked like he had so much fun. Yeah, I agree. But we're also going to have a lot of fun because we will be helping Marara with his mathematics. And we're going to see if our studio guests can do the same with their sums. That's right. It's time for... Number one! Now, the aim of this game is to help Marara with his maths. Yes, please, help me. The game is very simple. On the blackboard, there are three sums, just like this one. Now, if you notice, there is something missing from this sum. Now, all our number runners have to do is solve this sum and go and find the missing number from the number pit over there. Now, we didn't want to make this too easy, so they have to look for the number among all the numbers that are here. Once you find the number, like so, you have to go back to the blackboard. Now, once you get here, you need to make sure that you put your number in the correct position, like that. Please make sure that you don't get your numbers mixed up because the moment it's on the board, it's stuck and you cannot change it. That's right. Now, once you've solved the sum, it's time for you to run, run, run across to your teammates and pick the person to do the next sum, like this. There's a catch. You have three sums to solve in just 45 seconds. So, we all need to cheer our number runners with the correct answer. Have we all understood? Yes! Very good. Now, in number one, speed is everything. Because if you do manage to solve the three sums within 45 seconds, you get to take these wonderful maths books back to your school. Are the rules clear? Yes! Are you ready to play number one? Yes! Excellent. Very good. Let's have our number runner, number one. Please. Let's put 45 seconds on the clock. Reveal the first sum. Eight times what is 64? Go. Help her with the record. Eight. 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 You're sure that's your final answer? Tag the next person. Tag the next person. What plus 10 is 
40. Go. That's it. That's it. That's it. You're sure that's your final answer? Yes. Tag the next person. 90 divided by 9 is what? Go. Hurry, hurry, hurry. You're sure that's your final answer? Yes. Very good. Stop the clock. Excellent. Now, let's look at what you did. We asked you, 8 multiplied by what is 64? And you brought us 8. Is that the correct answer? Yes! 8 is the correct answer. Very good. And on to the second sum. We asked you, what plus 10 is 40? And you gave us 30. The question is, is 30 the correct answer? Yes! Are you sure? Yes! 30 is the correct answer. And on to the third sum. Now this one we asked you, 90 divided by 9 is what? And you gave us 10. Is 10 the correct answer? Yes! Very good. You got all the three sums correct. Let's give them a big round of applause. Well done. Very good. Now, of course, the last question is, did you manage to solve the three sums in under 45 seconds? I can now reveal that they did manage to solve the three sums well under 45 seconds, which means that you are taking these wonderful maths books back to your school. Let's give them a round of applause. Well, congratulations. You're all winners because you have helped me with my maths homework. We have another half hour of fun to go right here on the No Zone. That's right, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. So, why don't we remind everyone what the Nozone buzzwords are? Team. Coach. Match. Champion. Referee. Now, Marara, do you think you could give us a hint about what Ranger Rukia will be telling us today? Today's animals are smart and likes to climb up trees mm -hmm. and sit on rocks. And, and they live in large groups. Do you know what animal Marara is talking about? No. <laughs> All right then, let's go together to the wild zone and find out which animal Marara is talking about. Hello Nozone Rangers, I am Ranger Rukia and I'm here to tell you all about these animals that look like monkeys, baboons. Baboons belong to the primate family. They have thick and coarse fur on their bodies, but their faces and ears have no fur. They are very smooth. The arms and legs of baboons are of the same length and this makes the baboons walk in a funny way. Baboons have long tails that help them balance when climbing trees and running. The baboon doesn't have fur on its behind. This helps in providing comfort for the baboon while sitting down. Interesting. Their eyes are very close to each other, and they have a long snout similar to that of a dog. Baboons also have heavy, powerful jaws that they use to grind food when eating. Baboons also have big cheeks, which they use to grab food and run away with it without needing to stop and chew the food. The male baboon has some different characteristics from the female baboon. The male baboon is twice as big as the female baboon. They also have long hair around their shoulders, which makes them look even larger than the females. Just like all other mammals, female baboons have teats which they use to suckle their young ones. They feed and groom their young until they are old enough to take care of themselves. This includes carrying them up and down trees and giving them piggyback rides. What lucky little baboons! Baboons are omnivorous animals. This means that they eat plants and other animals. They eat grass, seeds, young leaves and fruits. Sometimes they eat insects, fish, and even small antelopes. Just like humans, baboons have their own families. The baboon family is called a troop. 
It consists of members ranging from 5 to 250 baboons. There are so many family members. The male baboons take care of their troop and make sure that they are safe from danger. When baboons feel threatened, they challenge their enemy, baring their teeth and chasing after them. Sometimes male baboons fight over territory. Baboons are very active animals and they spend a lot of time playing, jumping, climbing and fighting. They are very good climbers and acquire tree climbing skills when they are very young. Look at that one going up the tree. It's amazing. It's just like you and I participating in sports at school. Baboons are in danger. They are killed by people for food and their beautiful fur. It is the work of rangers like you and I to take care of our lovely baboons and protect them from danger so that they live in a safe environment. I had no idea that baboons were so interesting or that they lived in big groups called clans. Oh, oh yes, and I loved the way the baby baboons were being carried on their back. <laughs> everyone and welcome back to Hot Numbers. Are you all ready to have fun with maths? Yes! yes. Good. Today we are going to look at perimeters of squares and rectangles. Oh, 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 Tisha Pendo. Now, what is a perimeter? Perimeters. Now, let's see. How many of you have fences around your house? Ah, all of you have fences around your house. Now, do you know how long your fence is? Well, 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 I think mine is two meters long. Uh, Marara, I think it might be bigger than that. Uh, two meters is pretty small to fit a bed, leave alone a house. Oh, uh, really? Well, I don't think I understand perimeters then. Now, the distance all around your fence is the perimeter. Now, what shape am I holding? Yes, Andati? A square. Good. Now, the distance all around this square is called the perimeter. Is that clear? Yes! Good. To measure the perimeter of this square, I'll have to measure the edge of this square and then add them all up. Now, Marara, can you help me measure? Use the ruler to measure one side of the square. Okay. Okay. Uh, it is 12 centimeters. Uh -huh. So, shall I measure the next side? No, you don't have to. Oh, but Chapendo, you said we measure all the four sides and add them up. I've only measured one side. Yes, but our shape is a square. And what do we know about a square? Yes, Martin? All sides are equal. All the sides are equal. Once we know the measurement of one side, then we know the measurement of all the sides. So all the sides of this square are? 12 centimeters. Very good. Now, so that makes it 12 centimeters plus 12 centimeters plus 12 centimeters plus 12 centimeters, which we could also say is 12 times 4. So what is the perimeter of this square? Yes, Stacy. 4 times 12 centimeters is equal to 48 centimeters. Well done. Of course, we can only do this for squares. Other shapes have different sizes. Their sides are not equal. Now, let's look at this rectangle. So how is a rectangle different from a square? Yes. Two of its sides are equal. That's right. So two of its opposite sides are always equal. Okay, now Marara and Wanjiro, could you measure for us the length of the rectangle, which is the longer side, and the width of the rectangle, which is the shorter side? Okay, okay. Um, the length is 20 centimeters. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, and the width okay, is... Just measure the width. Uh, Right, 10 centimeters. So we need to add up all the four sides. So 20 centimeters plus 20 centimeters, 10 centimeters plus 10 centimeters. So what is the answer? 
Yes, Nganga. 60 centimeters. That's right. Now, the perimeter of this rectangle, which is a distance all around, is 60 centimeters. So the perimeter of a rectangle is length plus width plus length plus width, which is the same as length plus length plus width plus width, which is the same as two times length plus two times width. And that of a square is length plus length plus length plus length, which is the same as length times four. Okay? Yes. yes. Good. Now in front of you are some different shapes. I'd like you to measure them and calculate their perimeters. Okay? Go right ahead. You can join in at home. Just measure up some shapes, which are rectangles or squares. You can use exercise books or whatever you come across, just as long as they are rectangles and squares. And remember, you use your ruler or your tape measure. So you're measuring your rectangle. So measure the length and then the width because your shape is a rectangle. Okay. Now you have a square, so you just measure one of the sides. Okay, very good. So let's see what you've got. Yeah. What were you measuring? Yes, Mora? A textbook. So what is its perimeter? 83 centimeters. Okay, let's check. So, so the length is 24.5. And the width is 17. So the answer is 83 centimeters. What about your team, Marara? Oh, we found the perimeter of this squared Chapendo. Aha, uh -huh. and what was its perimeter? Yes, Stacy? 84 centimeters. Now let's see what's the length of one of the sides. So it is 21 centimeters. So 21 centimeters plus 21 centimeters plus 21 centimeters plus 21 centimeters, which is the same as four times 21 is equals to 84 centimeters. Well done, everyone. We have to finish now, but you can keep looking for perimeters to measure. It's now time now to exercise our creative minds. It's time for Art Zone. Hi kids, this is Art Zone and this is Uncle Supu. And today we're gonna make trophies. We need shiny paper, and then you need normal newspaper, some cello tape, and scissors. Again, take care when you're using the scissors. First, you need some long strips for the hands and legs, and one big strip for the body. Just gonna be a bit wider, okay? Now start with the limbs. I take four and roll them up. Try and make them as tight as possible. One, two, three, and four limbs. Two for the hands and two for the legs. So we go now to the section, the body section, which is this rectangular area, and I take two strips, fold them into a nice size. It's gonna be upright like this. The head is gonna come here, the legs down here. Now the head, another piece. It's a long one and just crumple it up into a ball. Next is to put everything together, and this is when I need the tape. And you have to use a lot of tape so that things don't fall apart later on. Okay, let's join the head first to the body. And then we get the arms. So we have the two arms connected in. Now I reduce the size of the arms to the size I want by just folding it. I'm also using the tape to make the arms much more stable and the position I want to hold them. The legs again, you have to use a lot of tape. So this reinforces the legs to make them much stronger and they can hold all the weight above them. I'm gonna stick them on to the body here. So now I'm gonna put in a base using the same paper. And then I'm pasting on to the base. Make sure when you join them, all the pieces together, there's enough tape to make it hold strong. 
So the shiny paper, you just take it and just wrap around every part of the body you want to wrap it around. Don't worry about it. the creases and the folds because it makes it look more interesting. And I hold it in with some tape again. Then I go to the arms and I'll fold and follow the arms. And I go ahead and do the other arm, the legs, even the base, and we end up with the same figure. And I hope you can also try and make yours. And see you next time on Axon. That was a wonderful art zone. I really enjoyed that as usual. What about you, Marara? Oh yes, I enjoyed it too. Making those aluminum figures will be so much fun. I agree. But the thing is, where are you going to get aluminum in the wild? Um, I think I can find it. But will you help me, Charlie? <laughs> I will, Marara, I will. But that will have to wait. Because right now we have to do something a little bit serious. It's time for Spell It. Animal, animal. chapter, building, narrow, building. respect, Meter. respect. deep, vegetable, work. 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 Welcome to Spell It. Gatti, Andati, and Stacy. You're about to step out of the shadows and into the light. You will compete for the top prize of the Nozone Spelling Champion. If you win, you will go home with your very own Nozone Dictionary. Now each contender has just 30 seconds to spell correctly as many words as possible. If you want to hear the word again, just say repeat and the word will be repeated for you. Now each word is worth one point. So the more words you spell correctly, the greater your chances of winning. Are the rules clear? Yes. Gatti, you're up first. Kindly take your place on the spelling zone. Gatti, your 30 seconds start now. Beat. B E A T. Sport. S P O T. Coach. C O A C H. Accept. A W C P E. T. Compete. C O M P E T. Trainer. T R A I N E R. Football. F W O. Time is up. Please step back. Andati, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Andati. Your 30 seconds start now. Lost. L-O-S-T. Team. T-E-A-M. Score. S-C-O-R-E. Defeat. D-E-A-F-E-T. Whistle. W-H-I-S-T-L-E. Uniform. U-L-I-F-O-R-M. Competitor. C-O-M-P-E-T-E-R. Swimming. S W. I double M E I N G. Spectator. Time is up. Well done, Andrew. Well done. Please step back. <laughs> Stacy, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Stacy, your 30 seconds start now. Goal. G O L G O L G O A L. Match. M A T H M M A T C H Track T R A C K Rugby R U B B Y yeah. Basketball B S B A S K E T B U L Referee R E D R E Time is up. Please step back. We can now reveal the scores. In third place, we have Gatti. Let's give her a round of applause, everyone. In second place is Stacy, which means our winner is 
and Dati. Let's give him a round of applause. Well done. Chef, well done, Dati. Well done. Congratulations. You are today's No Zone Spelling Champion. Show everyone your dictionary. Let's give him another round of applause. Well done. Congratulations to all of you because you did spell very many words correctly. I think it's time we all take a break. So we're going back to the chill out zone. Let's all sit back, relax, and enjoy another exciting edition of African Tales. Hello everyone. How are you today? I am going to read you a very funny story about two friends who just loved playing football. I hope you enjoy it. Remember to listen out for this week's buzzwords. The match. Once upon a time, there lived a baboon and a buffalo. They were the greatest of friends and would spend every day playing together. From the moment the sun rose to the moment it set over the plains of the Maasai Mara. Baboon and Buffalo's favorite sport was football. Baboon would run along dribbling the ball towards Buffalo. As soon as Baboon passed Buffalo the ball, Buffalo would kick it with all his might through giraffe's legs. Buffalo and Baboon would then run around cheering and whistling until they were out of breath. <laughs> they were really the best of friends. One day, Mama Rhino announced that there was to be a huge football match to celebrate the birth of baby Rhino. But only animals with horns were invited. Buffalo had big horns, beautiful curved ones, as you know. So he began practicing his kicks in preparation for the big game. But what about baboon? Baboons don't have horns. Don't worry. Buffalo wouldn't let a little thing like that stop his best friend from playing. Oh, no. Buffalo was determined to find a way to let Baboon play in the big match. And so the two friends put their heads together to come up with a plan. And they did just that. They came up with an amazing solution. Baboon would pretend to be an animal with horns. They decided to make horns for Baboon and stick them to his head. <laughs> they visited the bees who gave them beeswax to use for glue. They found some pointy sticks that looked like horns and stuck them to Baboon's head. Buffalo stood back to admire his work. He smiled broadly. Baboon looked as much a horned animal as any other. Well, almost. The day of the football match arrived and the two friends turned up at the stadium together. As Buffalo took his position near the goalposts, he advised his friend Baboon not to run too fast or to jump up and down when he scored a goal. No one must find out that your horns aren't real, he warned. As soon as the referee blew his whistle, the two teams of horned animals started running up and down the pitch, chasing the ball and hoping to be the first to score a goal. It was such an exciting game, but Boone couldn't resist trying to run for the ball. He ran faster and faster, dribbling the ball between other animals' legs, completely forgetting all about his friend's advice. The other animals on the team were so impressed by Baboon's football skills that they kept passing him the ball. Baboon was so excited by the cheers of the spectators and so alive with excitement that he lost all his good sense and started to do backflips in jubilation when Buffalo kicked the winning goal. When he saw this, Buffalo was really worried about his friend's horns and he tried to get near to Baboon to remind him not to move about so much. But Baboon was surrounded by the other players who wanted to learn more about his football tricks and so Buffalo couldn't get near him. Baboon was so happy that his team had won, he couldn't stop showing off. He cleverly bounced the ball from his tail to his head and back again. But Suddenly, the bee's wax glue became unstuck and off fell Baboon's horns. 
the crowd gasped. The competitors gasped. Baboon looked down at the pile of sticky sticks lying in a heap at his feet. He looked back up into the faces of the horned animals. They were no longer looking at him with admiration. Instead, they were staring at him with anger. Those aren't horns, snarled Rhino. They are sticks. Animals with horns can't play with animals who don't have horns. The rest of the team joined in shouting at Baboon. The crowd began to close in on him when suddenly there was a loud snort and Buffalo burst into the crowd. He stood right beside his best friend and stared at the other animals. Baboon is my best friend. Just because he doesn't have horns doesn't mean he shouldn't be able to play with us. <sighs> he is the best footballer amongst us. We should be proud to have him on our team. <sighs> Some of the animals looked at the floor in shame. If you won't play with him just because he is different, then I won't play with you. Baboon leapt onto Buffalo's back and they walked off together. Thank you, Buffalo, said Baboon. You're my best friend. And you're mine, replied Buffalo. And from that day, Baboon and Buffalo played football together every day with their other friends, horns or no horns. The end. I hope you enjoyed the story. Did you hear any of the buzzwords? I bet you did. Well, that's all we had time for. I hope to see you soon. Oh, I really loved that story. It was just so entertaining. Mara, of course you loved that story. That story has two more things you love. It Cartoons and it has football. <laughs> but it was still a great story. Definitely. I enjoyed it myself. But sadly, that is all we have time for today. So did you all enjoy the African tale? Yes! And thank you so much for helping us with today's show. Have you all had fun? Yes! Great. Now we hope that you have also enjoyed yourself. Let's all say goodbye. Bye! Bye.